In the stock market, Jamaica and Barbados are up, while Trinidad and Tobago is down. Rhonda Tillett from the Belize Borough of Standards talks consumer protection, and Carla Hart romances us with flowers. I'm Destiny Wagner, and this is Legacy Markets. And welcome to Legacy Markets. I'm Destiny Wagner, your host for the newest source for intelligent and unbiased coverage of money, business, and the economy at home and in the Caribbean region. Analyst and co-host Rafia Flowers is here to provide you with the weekly business headlines and the latest news on the Caribbean stock markets. Thanks, Destiny. Now let's take a look at the stocks. The Jamaica Stock Exchange experienced a 2.9% increase from the previous trading week. The top winners were Epley Limited up by 15% and Jamaica Public Service and Company Limited up by 6%. The losers were Sterling Investment Limited down by 5% and Massey Holdings Limited down by 4%. In the Jamaican headlines, interest rates in Jamaica are expected to remain unchanged according to 75% of respondents in the financial sector until at least March. This represents a major change in sentiment as in October, 47% of the respondents expected interest rates to remain the same. It was reported that there has been an uptick in business confidence and a positive outlook on the effectiveness of efforts to curb inflation. The Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange slightly decreased by 2% from the previous trading week. The top two winners were JMMB Group Limited up by 9% and Prestige Holdings Limited up by 9%. The top two losers were Trinidad Cement Limited down by 4% and Trinidad and Tobago NGL Limited down by 3%. And while they are experiencing this drop, a significant move in the insurance industry, the Pan American Life Insurance Company of Trinidad and Tobago, announced its cancer care cover policy. This aims to alleviate the financial strain of cancer diagnosis amidst rising cancer cases in the Caribbean. The plan will offer benefits including lump sum payments upon diagnosis, income support, and coverage for medical expenses. And in Barbados, the governor of the central bank, Dr. Kevin Greenidge, said the economy grew by 4% to an unprecedented value of $12.8 billion, thanks to another robust performance of the tourism industry. This level of improvement is expected to be repeated during the coming fiscal year. Interestingly enough, the Barbados Stock Exchange increased, increased by only one basis points since the previous trading week. No securities advanced. However, one security declined, which was Emmer deposit down by 2%. Now here at home, this week, the Mexican pesos appreciated against the Belize dollar by five centavos. The Mexican pesos is the most traded currency from Latin America. As for the Guatemalan Quetzal, the Quetzal devalued by less than one centavos against the Belize dollars. As for the Euro to Belize dollars foreign exchange, the Belize dollar also devalued against the Euro by less than one cent. And that's it for the business headlines. We will have a brief commercial, but when we return, Destiny will be joined by our guest, Ms. Rhonda Tillett, Consumer Protection and Liaison Officer from the Belize Bureau of Standards. Legacy Fund will change Belize from small-scale municipal improvement projects to national infrastructural advancement. Unsightly playgrounds, derelict buildings, unsafe bridges, poor housing choices will become a thing of the past. How will this happen, you ask? Well, with the right partners, of course, but not the ones you're thinking of. Legacy is not looking at traditional financial institutions. We will build this transformation with you, the everyday hard-working Belizean citizen the hairdresser, the tour guide, the fruit vendor at the market. Using the market and innovative financial tools, Legacy brings you and believes the financial solution to grow your wealth for you and your community. Contact us and find out how you can be a part of this exciting new Belize that we build. Call 822-1794 or email clientservices at legacyfundlimited.com. People. 
Capital, Innovation, Legacy Fund Limited. Joining us on Legacy Markets, our theme for this week is needs versus luxuries. What investors and consumers need to know. We will explore a consumer-focused area in our economy on tonight's investment segment. The Belize Borough of Standards, also known as BBS, is the national standards body that promotes efficiency and competitive production in goods and services. Quality infrastructure is the foundation for achieving this objective. The Buru is responsible for protecting, securing, and safeguarding the country's welfare, a function carried out through the Consumer Protection Unit. Rhonda Tillett, Consumer Protection and Liaison Officer at the Buru, is here today to discuss the Buru's importance within us and explain the functioning role of the Buru. So welcome, Ms. Tillett. Hi, thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us. We are so happy that you're here so we can get a clear understanding of what your branch in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Security, and Enterprise does. So let us start with that. What is the core of the Bureau of Standards? So the Belize Bureau of Standards is specifically responsible for the promulgation of standards through the Standards Act, the implementation of those standards, and the revision of those standards. And we're responsible also for the Metrology Act. Uh, and that's what we're responsible for in terms of consumer protection. Consumer protection is not something that is a standalone thing. It is encompassed in all of those acts that we administer. Thank you. So I know you mentioned that the borough is in charge of the Metrology Act. Um, however, many of us aren't really familiar with those acts. So if you don't mind, can you please give us a synopsis of each? The Standards Act of 1992, the National Metrology Act, and the Consumer Protection Unit. So the Standards Act gives the Bureau the responsibility to act on behalf of Belize on a national and international and regional level, uh, participating in the development of standards. Now a standard is a document that several agencies, people, stakeholders um, get together to come to a consensus on what we will agree, a product, a service, a good, is going to be basically it's that's a nutshell okay so what are some of the compulsory standards that we are seeing implemented by businesses and how do you control which business complies or not like let's say labels okay specifically labels um yes the bureau the belize bureau standards through the standards act um, has implemented about 28 compulsory standards. Um, these standards that are compulsory, they're not done in isolation, meaning that the Bureau of Standards is not the entity that decides if these standards are going to be compulsory. We do have stakeholder committees that will get together and decide whether or not in the interest, the best interest of the Belizean pub, um, populace or uh, national markets or entry to international markets, whether or not these standards are going to be mandatory. And we do have a, a standards advisory council, which advises the minister responsible for this department on the need for passage of these standards or a standard as um, compulsory. And if we're talking specifically about labeling, labeling is one of those standards that is particularly necessary for the protection of consumers 
consumer te- protection. And for those businesses that are producing these goods, products, or services, um, a label uh, protects a consumer in a way where you know, based on the information that is provided and based on what the standard decides is going to be outlined on that product, it gives that consumer information that would be necessary for them to make an informed decision. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of consumer protection, we are aware that there is a consumer protection unit, and we understand that there is no comprehensive legislation under the unit. With that said, how can you enforce the mission of your unit if there is no legislation to back you up? Okay, so that's one of those misconceptions that we are very happy to clear up. Um, Consumer protection does not necessarily need a particular act in order for consumers to be protected because the legislations that the substantive legislations of Belize acts as tools for consumer protection. For example, um, the Standards Act that aids in consumer protection by passing these compulsory standards and it also aids in consumer protection not just by the compulsory standard but by those voluntary standards that are developed now the reason for developing any standard is so that we have consistency in the production of any good so that the consumer labeling uh, is properly informed on how these uh, products goods and services are are made and for access to uh, international market specifically. Well, thank you so much, Miss Rhonda, for that insight. Um, we do need to take a short break, but when we come back, I want us to talk about the consumer rights, so don't go away. Are you interested in diversifying your investment portfolio while maintaining a low-risk profile? Are you the smart, sophisticated investor that is seeking greater interest return on your investments while investing in your city? If you are, then you should invest in the Belize City Council's municipal securities. The Belize City Council offers both short and long-term securities that are attractive financial market options, which provides the investor with greater social added value satisfaction. You ask why? Because your investment in the securities are reinvested back into the growth and development of your city by way of infrastructural development, streets and drainage construction, parks, playgrounds, bridge rehabilitation, and much, much more. Let's look at the key features of municipal securities. First, they are tax-free. This means more of your money stays with you. You will enjoy greater interest yield without any tax deductions. Second, our interest rates of 4.5% on municipal papers and 8% on municipal bonds easily surpasses current financial institutions' interest rates on savings. Municipal securities are also a great investment in your retirement. The faster your money grows, the faster you reach your retirement fund goals. The municipal paper and the municipal bond are both tradable and transferable investments. This means that investors can get their money back before the maturity date by selling their securities to a third party. Lastly, Investing in municipal papers offers investors a steady stream of income. You will receive your full interest earned on a quarterly basis until the maturity of the paper. To learn more about the Belize City Council's municipal securities and how you can invest in your city, call our financial advisor, Alpha Capital LLP, at 822-1794, email at securitiestrade1 at alphacapital.bz, or give us a call at 227-3073. Your Belize City Council, always about the people. Welcome back. 
We are joined this evening by Ms. Rhonda Tillett, Consumer Protection and Liaison Officer at the Borough of Standards, talking to us about the role of the Borough of Standards. So first, I want to talk about what affects all consumers, price-controlled goods. Ms. Rhonda, can you please explain to us what the Supplies Control Act Chapter 293 is? That's another one of those misconceptions that we have to clear up. So the Supplies Control Unit was formerly a part of the Bureau of Standards. That unit is no longer a part of the Bureau of Standards. Therefore, when it comes to price control and price regulated goods, that is administered by the Supplies Control Unit, which now falls as a unit under the Ministry of um, Agriculture, Food and Enterprise. So how can consumers be protected if any violation of price gouging and what is the consumer's right? So consumers have the right to be informed. Consumers have the right to redress. Consumers have the right to health and safety. Consumers have not just rights, but responsibilities as well. So in addition to the rights that consumers have, you also have responsibilities. For example, walking into a store, and we were previously talking about labeling, you have the right to be informed. So those products that are labeled, the reason why the standards specify certain information, for example, the company that made the product, the quantity of the product, the name of the product, the ingredients of the product, the date the product was made, as well as the date the product is expected to either be uh, expired, quote unquote expired, or be close to expiration. Um, that is your right as a consumer to have that information presented to you and your responsibility as a consumer is to walk in, read your products, and use the information to make an informed decision. Thank you so much, Ms. Rhonda. It seems as though the borough has a lot of responsibility and you have been able to clear up many misconceptions, but are there any other misconceptions about your office that the public should be aware of? Expiration of products. So another misconception that a lot of people, consumers have is that as the consumer protection uh, arm of the government, that we as a department have that right to walk into a store and to pull those goods off the shelf if they're expired. That mandate does not fall under our department, it does fall under the public health department. Mm -hmm. Therefore, with the consumer protection hotline that was established back in, back in 2008, the purpose of that is so that we could feel those complaints and concerns that the consumers have, and we then feed that into the necessary department or ministry or organization that is specifically responsible for those aspects. Thank you. So it is safe to assume that the borough has a good relationship with the health department or they are collaborating to make sure that the goods and products are safe for all. Yes, that is correct. Well, Ms. Rhonda, is there anything you want us to know or the audience to know about the borough? Any good news or updates that you would like to share? So let me talk a little bit about the metrology arm of the Belize Bureau of Standards. So metrology is the science of measurement. And as such, the Belize Bureau of Standards has an industrial metrology unit, which is specifically responsible for the calibration of volume, mass, temperature, and pressure. Currently, the calibration services that we are providing to our producers and our uh, local manufacturers 
um, is for volume, for scales, and for mass. And on the other hand, um, the metrology unit is also responsible for the legal aspect of metrology. This is where our officers go out with weights or a volumetric prover, which is an instrument that is used to measure how much fuel is dispensed at the market and the weights we use to determine whether or not the scales, whether it's an industrial scale or it's a commercial scale, whether or not they're measuring accurately. And we also take packages from like the stores and make sure that whatever is on the shelf, for example, a five pound bag of flour, that it's actually five pounds. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Rhonda, for showing and for enlightening us on the Metrology Act and the system. Uh, thank you as well for being with us today and you shared so much valuable information, which I'm sure our viewers will appreciate. We hope to see you again on our show. Thank you for having us. We'll be right back with more Legacy Markets. Welcome to City Pulse by your Belize City Council. Join us on an exciting journey through the heart of Belize City, where we showcase the transformative initiatives shaping our resilient community. Our commitment to the people is unwavering, and our city's progress is built on solid foundations. At the beginning of this year, we pledged to rehabilitate 90 streets. Proudly, we've completed 71 streets, or 36,431 linear feet, which accounts for an impressive 78% of our commitment. The council has made significant progress. Among these, 23 have been concreted, 26 have undergone rehabilitation using the chip and seal method, and an additional 22 streets have been further enhanced, being filled or topped up with materials such as hardcore or all-in, demonstrating our commitment to improving our city's infrastructure. But we're not stopping there we've identified 41 more streets that need our attention. We are projected to meet 100% of our 90 street commitment two months ahead of schedule, accounting for an unprecedented 54,829 plus linear feet of road rehabilitation completed within the last 10 months. This transformation is fueled by a $6.9 million budget allocation, with 59% coming from municipal papers, 41% from the Council's operations, and support from our valued partners. Stay connected with City Pulse and witness the journey of a brighter, more connected Belize City. We're committed to your future. This People's United Party City Council is always about the people. and thank you for tuning in to the Legacy Business Show. This segment will showcase a Belizean entrepreneur making significant waves in the economy each week. These are forward-thinking individuals who are pushing boundaries and breaking barriers. Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and we know that a floral arrangement is definitely a need to keep the romance alive. This week, we are taking a look into that industry that gives couples that extra touch for Valentine's Day. We are joined by Carla Mejia Hart, owner of one of the first floral shops in Belize, Florasal. Welcome, Ms. Hart. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us and happy Love Day. I know you must be very busy with all the Valentine's orders for tomorrow. So thank you for taking the time during your busy schedule to be with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, Mrs. Hart, can you kindly tell us about the history of your shop and what motivated you to start? Um, well, um, I've known Florasol to be the leading flower shop in Belize from since I was a young girl. As a matter of fact, I grew up in pretty much the backyard of Florasol. Um, it's a neighborhood business as I uh, when I was growing up on Bayman Avenue, and um, I know Miss Solly and her husband, Mr. Mario, and they were our go-to flower shop. Miss Solly did the flowers for my wedding. 
a few years ago. And, um, you know, so when the opportunity came up um, to buy the business, it was a no brainer. Um, who doesn't love flowers? And um, here we are. That is incredible. And we have been for the past few weeks talking about MSMEs and the perks and challenges that come with the territory. So what have been some of the most rewarding highlights of owning a floral shop? Well, a flower shop is a, is a happy place. Um, flowers make people happy. Flowers make people bloom. That's been the motto of Florisol for many years. Um, so, you know, it's there's just something about the smell of pine and eucalyptus and lilies that is just therapeutic. Um, but besides that, for me, the best thing is the smile it, br it brings on people's faces. Um, delivery is part of the, the favorite thing I like to do because you get to interact with customers and you have a chit chat with them, you know. So I like helping out. Um, doing deliveries and meeting people and seeing how they react when they get roses and lilies and beautiful flowers. Um, so that's been by far the highlight um, of owning the flower shop. But, you know, my background is construction. And so it's a far cry from construction. And it's a lot less um, stressful, I should say. Um, so like I said before, it's, it's, it's my happy place. And I love doing this. I can tell that you're very passionate about your business based on your tone of voice and your expression, and you are indeed right. Flowers do make someone feel extra loved and cared for. But right now, there is some competition. So how are you able to keep up with the competition within the floral industry? You, we, our florists have to innovate. I mean, uh, we have to follow the trends. Um, we have to look at demographics. We have a very young population in this country. So we cater to them um, and they let us know what they want. We have a chat um, service that we operate and we've really improved it. Now there are pre-order forms on the chat. Um, we have all the payment information on the chat. So we make it easy. Everyone in Belize has a smartphone. So you can do all your business from your smartphone any time of the day. And of course, uh, earlier this year, we, we launched a online sales. So you can buy flowers and send flowers to Belize, to your loved ones from anywhere in the world. And you can shop online at any time from anywhere in the world um, and be secure when you use your credit card. So that has been a game changer. It has opened the market to our diaspora Belizeans. Um, and so they have fully taken advantage of that. Um, before, they may have used 1-800-Flowers uh, or maybe Teleflora or FTD, um, and they have significant charges, additional charges. We don't. You pay for your flowers, you pay for your delivery, and that's it. So uh, that's where we compete with our diaspora. Um, that's where we compete with international flower companies that normally sell to Belize. Um, and these companies were also using local flower company um, flower companies. They don't send the roses on a plane. Mm -hmm. They'll call us up and we arrange for them and they pay us a commission. Now we do direct sales. So that's been a game changer as well. Yeah, that is incredible. And I love to hear that you are staying up to date with the tech trends as well. Um, however, there is some unfortunate news in regards to older businesses in Belize that are currently closing down, mainly not being able to compete in the market. But what do you think has been a strength for Floricel that has allowed you to survive for so long? Well, we, ha we have been at Floricel now for approximately five years. And um, we went through COVID. And during the shutdown with COVID, uh, it gave us time to do our R&D and to look at what flower shops were doing worldwide and to try and adapt some of those practices um, to our own business. And one of the things that is important is to look at demographics to see who is buying flowers. Um, who, who are the people out there in the, in the market that are buying your flowers and cater to them. You know, um, young, young customers love wraps. They love the fun packages. 
they love the fun phases. And so we, we get that and we present in that. And that's been, that's done really well for us. Um, so I think just studying the market and see where the trends are going. And, you know, if you don't adapt, you, you could be in a position where you are forced to close your doors downsize. or downsize or, you know, um, reinvent. Yeah. So that, that is, that is also a part of what we have done. We, we offer now other products, um, baskets, boxes, I mean, um, self-care items, candles, you know, we've, um, augmented our flower business with other services and, and that's done really well as well. It seems to me that one of your strengths has been constantly innovating and keeping up with the current trends. Uh, I do want to talk more about your brand nationally and regionally. And you mentioned that you have been expanding to the diaspora as well, making it easier for them to order flowers in Belize. But do we, do we have or do you have a market in any other countries outside of Belize and in the U.S.? No, we don't. Um, the diaspora Belizean is is Your would represent market. most of the yes. Okay. Um, at this point, we have not ventured into um, other markets. We can do we can do that. That is an option, and we are looking at that um, regionally first. Um, we have been approached by a few companies that have asked us to deliver REITs to, let's say, El Salvador or Guatemala, Mexico. Um, but we don't have the affiliation as yet to do that. Um, you can send flowers to Belize through us from anywhere in the world. We do send to other parts of the world, but we have partners that we use for that. Um, so that, that is something that we have looked at to expand our market um, to the region and then hopefully globally. Yeah, absolutely. So we have been talking about all of the things that have been going well. Why are you decided to go into this business and your advancement with technology? But we do want to know, has there been any difficulties that or obstacles that you face with opening this business and running it? Well, soon after we opened, um, we were into it about a year when COVID hit. Um, so as soon as we built up steam, we had to close down. I think it was for three months. That was a damper. But I, you know, in a lot of ways, um, COVID was an eye opener. Um, we had to not rely on the, on the um, traditional ways of doing business. We had to learn to innovate. We had to go touchless, you know, so there was the birth of the contactless um, ordering system and payments and doing and migrating to online. Now the majority of our sales um, are are online. So that's 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 been a challenge, but it has made us stronger and and better as a flower company, in my view. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. We've also looked at suppliers. Um, the, we we have multiple suppliers now where before we had one main supplier and if he went down, we went down. <laughs> so now we have multiple suppliers um, from the U.S., Guatemala, as well as Mexico. And of course, our tropicals are from Belize. Yes. Well, Miss Carla, is there anything that our viewers should know or any updates that you want to share with us? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, earlier this year, we launched our website. Um, it's floresellbze.com. And I just want the viewers to know that that is an option for buying flowers, not only at Valentine, um, on, on Valentine's Day, but throughout the year. So if you want to send flowers home to Belize or you want to send flowers to Orange Walk, you can do it online. If you forgot and you missed us at five o'clock, you can do it from the comfort of your home and you can use your debit card or your credit card or you can use a direct transfer and you can use our online service and send flowers anywhere. Make someone smile. Awesome. And just one last question before we go. But Miss Carla, if someone is watching right now and they want to order flowers, will they be able to arrive for Valentine's Day tomorrow? Well, we are closed or our orders are closed for or pre-orders are closed for Valentine at this time. But we have a walk-in shop. 
we've expanded our offering at the walk-in shop. So you can stop by, you can buy, and you can walk away. We'll have digital wallet. You can use your digital wallet to pay. You can use e-cash. You can use your credit card at our walk-in shop. And of course, cash. That's always a uh, um, that's always accepted, right? Always. And, uh, and <laughs> so you can you can you can make someone happy on Valentine's Day if you forgot to order. It's it you know you still have a chance to get flowers from Florisol. Well, Mrs. Hart, you and your flowers are so beautiful, and we want to thank you so much for sharing some natural beauty with us here at Legacy Markets. We want to wish you the best for tomorrow, and we are running out of time, but thank you so much for visiting us to talk about flowers. Thank you, and happy Valentine to everyone in Belize and beyond. Yes, thank you again. Thank well, you. we do need to take a break, but don't go away. Legacy Fund will change Belize from small-scale municipal improvement projects to national infrastructural advancement. Unsightly playgrounds, derelict buildings, unsafe bridges, poor housing choices will become a thing of the past. How will this happen, you ask? Well, with the right partners, of course, but not the ones you're thinking of. Legacy is not looking at traditional financial institutions. We will build this transformation with you, the everyday hard-working Belizean citizen the hairdresser, the tour guide, the fruit vendor at the market. Using the market and innovative financial tools, Legacy brings you and believes the financial solution to grow your wealth for you and your community. Contact us and find out how you can be a part of this exciting new Belize that we build. Call 822-1794 or email clientservices at LegacyFundLimited.com. People. Capital. Innovation, Legacy Fund Limited. Are you interested in diversifying your investment portfolio while maintaining a low risk profile? Are you the smart, sophisticated investor that is seeking greater interest return on your investments while investing in your city? If you are, then you should invest in the Belize City Council's municipal securities. The Belize City Council offers both short and long-term securities that are attractive financial market options, which provides the investor with greater social added value satisfaction. You ask why? because your investment in the securities are reinvested back into the growth and development of your city by way of infrastructural development, streets and drainage construction, parks, playgrounds, bridge rehabilitation, and much, much more. Let's look at the key features of municipal securities. First, they are tax-free. This means more of your money stays with you. You will enjoy greater interest yield without any tax deductions. Second, our interest rates of 4.5% on municipal papers and 8% on municipal bonds easily surpasses current financial institutions' interest rates on savings. Municipal securities are also a great investment in your retirement. The faster your money grows, the faster you reach your retirement fund goals. The municipal paper and the municipal bond are both tradable and transferable investments. This means that investors can get their money back before the maturity date by selling their securities to a third party. Lastly, investing in municipal papers offers investors a steady stream of income. You will receive your full interest earned on a quarterly basis until the maturity of the paper. To learn more about the Belize City Council's municipal securities and how you can invest in your city, call our financial advisor, Alpha Capital LLP, at 822-1794, email at securitiestrade1 at alphacapital.bz, or give us a call at 227-3073. Your Belize City Council, always about the people.
welcome back. And joining me is my co-host Rafia, and we learned so much today. We do want to apologize for a short episode, but Valentine's Day is tomorrow, so we have to make sure that everyone is celebrating accordingly and have enough time to prepare. So Rafia, was there anything or any topic that interests you today? So yes, um, earlier today we spoke with Ms. Rhonda Tillett from the Bureau of Standards and some of the things we learned about the consumer protection. Like for one, I didn't know that, you know, they aren't quite responsible for goods that are about to expire. So that falls under the Ministry of Health. So a lot of very interesting topics came about in your conversations earlier today. And then we also had uh, Mrs. Hart from Florasol and we have Valentine's coming up. so. What are, you look forward, what are you looking forward to? Well, for Valentine's Day specifically, I might buy myself some roses this year. Okay. And it's nice to know that she now has them available easily through her online WhatsApp platform as well as her website. And for those also who are in the diaspora and have a lover or sweetheart here in Belize, you can also purchase through her website as well. Um, but I was curious, though. I did not get a chance to ask her this, but flowers are something that are becoming more innovative and people are becoming more creative with their bouquets. And right now what's trending in the US is the roses or the flowers that last a year. Have you heard about those? I absolutely have not heard about those, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so my first job in college, actually, my first big girl job, I would say, okay. I was working at a floral shop and it was for a company that had roses that lasted a year. They don't require any watering, no direct sunlight, um, but they have the texture. It is a real rose, but I think it's preserved or dipped in wax, but they go for anywhere between 40 US dollars for a single rose all the way to 1200 US dollars for a big box of roses. Okay, that sounds quite innovative. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll, we'll see that here in Belize in the, future, in the future. Let's hope. All right, so just as we were speaking about consumer, let's bring it back a little. I know that there has been some controversy surrounding the price of getting the Civic. For instance, the Federation has to pay a certain price uh, for each basketball game. And I know that we're in the basketball season. Now, to me, the Civic is a very large space. And whatever price it is, you know, I know some people think that it's fair. Some may think that it's not. What are your thoughts on that, especially given your experience all over the world? Well, I have not been able to make it to a game this season. However, in the seasons that I've been attending, some games are much more crowded than others. So I'm not sure if it would be sustainable for the organization to continue to pay such a hefty fee per game. I'm not sure if it would be ideal for them to pay commission based on the amount of sales that they do have, or even incorporate season ticket packages. Nice idea, yeah. So, well, hopefully we can get somebody on the show to, you know, enlighten us a little bit more about that. Yeah, maybe within the next few weeks we will have someone from the basketball organization come down and tell us more about what's going on with Civic and the pricing. But that's it for today's show. Remember to join us weekly on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for another episode of Legacy Markets. For now, we want to say good night and remember, together we create a legacy of a better world. Bye.